there's nothing that beats an epic harvest at the end of a successful crop. Especially long ones like this garlic here, who called this bed home for nearly 10 months. But, much like the scene downtown after a ticker tape parade, who's going to deal with the aftermath? Who's going to clean this up? Well, that would be us. It's not always like this though. Many crops are simply cut down and the soil left intact looking no worse for the wear. Not so with a root crop like garlic. And some might think, okay, great. We got our crop of garlic. Let's just leave well enough alone with this bed until next year's planting. But for those of us that realize that our greatest commodity in our gardens is actually our soil, that's not an option. Every second of every day that this soil lies here exposed, it's slowly dying, slowly becoming less of a commodity and more of a liability. Our soils are the single biggest factor that allow us to grow the level of harvest that we enjoy, and if we don't protect it at all costs, our successes will surely be lessened. Okay, so what's next? Well, there's three things that we can do to protect our soils after a big harvest like this and I'll cover all three today. Look, the soil is the lifeblood of our garden, and without it, we'd have nothing to harvest. Hey, before we get started here, let's just touch on what it is that makes soil so important for our gardens, so necessary for our plants. As the medium we grow our crops in, soil is the engine that drives our gardens. Soil anchors our plants, provides the roots with oxygen, water, and nutrients, and most of all, protection. Think plants can live without water? Without air? Without any food? Of course not. So just like our plants, we cultivate our soils. We look after them, we amend them, and we protect them. Just like nature does with the autumn leaf fall, and what we do with diligent mulching, we're always on guard to protect our soils from erosion, exposure, desiccation, and extreme temperature swings. As caretakers, we know that our soils are full of life, and that most of that bioactivity is in the top three inches of the profile. Left exposed in the middle of summer, and that active layer retreats downwards, becoming less effective at best, or dying out, destroying our beautiful soils at worst. All right, what can we do? Well, I mentioned three things off the top of the video, so let's get into it. All the strategies to protect our soil share the same basic concept, and that's to cover it. Let's start with the most rudimentary one, and that's just simply to cover it. Organic or inorganic, whatever you use, just cover it. Cardboard, wood, mulch, chop and drop the previous crop, it doesn't matter. Eliminate the exposure and solve the issue in minutes. This is going to immediately protect your soil, not to mention protect it from weeds moving in to some prime real estate. Not the most productive or aesthetic thing you can do with a garden bed, but still, we're protecting the soil until the next crop, and that's the most important thing. Taking it a step further, we could grow a cover crop. Literally, sprout and grow a living cover of specific, highly specialized plants. These crops, usually grasses or grains, are sown extremely heavily in thick blankets as soon as the bed is clear. Planted right at the surface, within as little as three days, the seeds sprout and start forming a protective barrier on your precious soil. But even more than the simple cover we talked about earlier, cover crops also bind up that soil with their root networks, virtually eliminating the possibility of erosion. And even further to that, they add organic matter back into the soil profile while keeping that precious top layer of soil bioactive. Cover crops, truly the next level in soil protection. I'll link all my cover crop videos down below in the description, but 
make sure you check out this one right here because really it covers it all. As great as cover crops are, nothing beats simply planting another veggie crop. Now, it's not always possible given where you live or the time of year, but with the right plant selection and the right amount of days left in summer, you can most certainly grow another veggie crop for harvest before winter. And that's what we're gonna do today. We got 60 days left of summer weather and eight well-started bell pepper plants itching to get out of these pots. It's an eight foot bed, which is gonna give us that perfect one foot spacing. It's like it was meant to be. Sometimes in gardening, you just get lucky like that. Nothing special needs to be done for the planting here, as the bed is already well churned up from that epic garlic harvest. I'm just gonna pre-dig some holes for the pepper plants, spacing them one foot apart. Now, I am gonna dig and plant those peppers pretty deep. I wanna let those adventitious roots work their magic. After that, we'll mulch, water, and fertilize in the end to really accelerate these guys. Peppers, like all nightshades, can actually send out roots along their stems. And this is great because it's what allows us to plant them so deep. We plant them deep because we want to establish that large root network as fast as possible. I know, it may seem odd at first, burying so much of the plant, but all nightshades are like this. Tomatoes, potatoes, and eggplants. They all send out adventitious stem roots, and the deeper we plant them, the better they do. This is gonna allow for accelerated growth and much healthier plants long term. As the day rolls on, it's starting to get a little bit warmer out and the soil in those holes is beginning to dry. Whenever that happens, it's always a good idea to pre-soak those holes to avoid any transplant shock. Roots and dry soil simply don't mix. For depth, as you may have seen in the first plant, I'm actually gonna remove some of the bottom layers of leaves to get these guys even deeper. It's not going to hurt them, and they're fairly well-started plants. The season's getting on, it's getting later, it's about six weeks past when I would normally plant peppers, so I want to give them every advantage possible. Now, you can fill back in with some of that displaced soil, but I always like to use some potty mix if I have some extra lying around. The plants and their new roots really seem to respond to it, so why not? The bed plants up quite nicely, with minimal effort. It's summer here, so watering is gonna be key, but let's mulch first so that that topsoil and all those bare patches can be afforded the same protection. Until those pepper plants grow and fill out the bed, the mulch is gonna serve nicely to protect the bare areas from exposure, erosion, and extreme temperatures. Locking that moisture in, we'll be able to water the plants less and fertilize more efficiently. Speaking of fertilizer, now is a perfect time to give those pepper plants a boost. Normally, when first planting peppers, we'd be skewing slightly higher in nitrogen. We do this to promote foliar and vegetative growth. But these guys are already flowering. They're already two months old. So I'm gonna go balanced NPK with some trace minerals all the way to cover the whole spectrum. This is great because I'm gonna combine the feeding with the first watering. Good stuff. A thorough soaking and nutrient bath. These peppers are gonna jump ahead in no time. And more importantly, their roots are gonna bind up the soil and the plants as a whole are gonna protect the top layers from the harshness of the elements. I know, it may not look like much now, but in a few short weeks, the bed's gonna be full, lush, and functioning at a high level. I guarantee it which is what good soils do. So protect yours so that it can take care of the plants and the plants can take care of you. Hey, thanks so much for watching guys. I appreciate the support more than you know. And if you're getting value from these videos, please like and share them to spread the word and help your fellow gardener to grow better.